we just found out moments before we started recording uh, that we're going into lockdown again. Our respective postcodes. At midnight tonight. At midnight. Good thing we are going to. Couldn't be midnight our... tomorrow night. <laughs> That's not how time works. Well, we have uh, we have to teach ourselves how to do this then. Yeah, we will. We'll have to because figure out how to remotely record. See each other again for a month. That's a bummer. Unless we do our sort of Handmaid's Tale style grocery runs. Oh yeah, I do still need to go for groceries, so <laughs> that is when I'll see you. We have to wear the of of uh, of Josh. <laughs> I'm not off. I'm like no. off dick. Adjacent to. <laughs> <laughs> Adjacent. <laughs> off twink. Oh, that's cute. Off I'm so bummed. I know. Because oh, I, I had just... to wait three weeks to go to the zoo because it was all booked out. I just started talking Maybe to this cute guy. Maybe I can pretend guy. I'm on. Maybe I'm on the. I can pretend I'm on my way to the grocery store. <laughs> I'll just put groceries in the boot. <laughs> and they're like, oh, the, the zoo? Um, I'll get zoo groceries. Groceries. <laughs> groceries. I've <laughs> come to buy a monkey. <laughs> oh, I've just started talking to this cute guy, and I was probably going to go on a date with him, and now I can't for a month. Who's going to be interested in another month? Like, he'll probably be married by then. Just got to get, like, prison fit. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> Jacked. <laughs> I see him again, I'll have like a prison tab. <laughs> says mom. <laughs> Make them out of like a pen and a... <laughs> oh. Should we yeah, <laughs> should we start? What are we doing? We're doing um, a podcast called Literature. Oh yeah, and I'm Sam and you're Sandy. Here That's we correct. are. That's correct, yeah. And we're in season two and today we're looking at and today we're looking at um being in lockdown after this episode. <laughs> Emma by Jane Austen, published in 1816. So Although clueless. some people say 1815. It was like December 1815. Yeah, it's clueless. It's clueless. Basically. Or the new movie Emma, starring the girl from The Vivitch, which was so. <laughs> Vivitch was. The Vivitching? <laughs> so good. <laughs> It was. God, I can't wait to watch it again. Like, I, I would like in watch a while it. so you can forget it a little bit? No, I want to watch it right now. Because yeah. I want to see, because when you watch it for the first time, you're scared. So you don't really see all the oh, details. So, so you the wanna, second like, time, watch it again. I want to see all the, the stuff that I missed because I was busy going, Ooh. <laughs> Looking through your fingers. <laughs> Looking through my fingers, like, focus pulling. <laughs> wow. We start Emma with an assessment of the titular character. Emma. Emma. She is, according to Jane Austen, handsome, clever, rich, with a comfortable home and a happy disposition, and had lived nearly 21 years in the world with very little to distress or vex her. Well, fucking good for her. <laughs> well, la di da ah. She is sort of the lady of her father's estate, Hartfield. Her mother died when she was a baby, and her older sister's married and has left home. So it was just her and her dad there. And especially now that her governess, Miss Taylor, the real mother figure in her life, is getting married today. Have you seen the Gwyneth Paltrow one? I have it as a kid, so I don't remember it much at all. Mm. I wonder if it's good. I don't know. All I know is she's she's in the cover and she's like, archery. And I'm like, when's that going to happen? Is that Princess Diaries 2? (laughs) It's not in the book, so. What? There's no archery in the book? (laughs) No. That's literally the DVD cover. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, All right, so someone's getting married. You're a fickle. Yeah, her governess, her ex-governess is getting married. How much old? I'm guessing like a 26-year-old. Wait. <laughs> Maybe 30? Maybe 30. It doesn't work because if she was like five years old, then her the governess, governess would be like eight. <laughs> An eight-year-old governess. <laughs> <laughs> now turn your page. <laughs> and she's like, you're eight. <laughs> um... Uh, yeah, let's say like early 30s, which is yeah. pretty late in those times to, to get be married. married. Yeah, yeah. It is. And she's actually marrying a widower. Mm. So they're both a bit older. His name is Mr. Weston, so she's going to be Mrs. Weston, which is what I'm going to be calling her for most of the story. Mrs. Weston. Mrs. Weston. Who would we cast her as? Well, describe oh. her to me. Um, is she old maidy? She's just lovely and sensible and like... Oh, lovely and sensible. Yeah, and... In the, maybe it's not intuitive, but in the film with Anna Taylor-Joy, she's played by the woman who plays um, Usher Greyjoy in Game of Thrones. 
<laughs> but she like does a really really good job, and she really? seems like just a perfectly lovely English woman, <laughs> and not a evil Viking princess. She wasn't evil. Well, cutthroat. Yeah, because she was a woman. Yeah, she's cool. I'm not saying she's not. I'm she just saying said it was a departure. Evil. <laughs> All right, so she is a sensible, gentle woman who's very patient with Emma, um, which you know is is hard might be hard to do for someone else because Emma's a very strong willed child who thinks a little too highly of herself. She's precocious. She's precocious. She's a little bit full of herself, um, but she's she's you know smart and yeah, well, yeah. yeah she's Cher from Clueless. Yeah, she is. No exactly. one gets married in Clueless until the end. So is this? Are we starting at the end? Who's Paul Rudd? Does she well. fuck her stepbrother? <laughs> oh my goodness. Emma um, actually gives herself the credit of hooking Mr. and Mrs. Weston up. Oh. She reckons that she might have a gift for matchmaking. Oh my which is God. fair enough. Because so far she has a 100% success rate. <laughs> did you write that? <laughs> my, yeah, I did. My grandfather was like, I have a 100% success rate for archery. Because apparently he only fired one arrow in his life and it hit the middle of the bullseye. And he just put it down and never touched it again. Because he's like, why improve on perfection? <laughs> I want to meet... Is this on your dad's side? Yeah, he's Sounds dead, unfortunately. Right. He's but... dead? Yeah, he's died. That's a bummer. He when was he like died? 95 or something. 2014. He died, yeah. He was cool. He was the one from the show. He was the fighter pilot. Yeah, the show that Sandy's talking about is this very great show called <laughs> foreign A Foreign Woman. Woman. Just Woman, one. singular. Um, <laughs> which is... Yeah, a camera I did a couple years ago. Anyway. I saw it, like, I think three or four times, and I cried every single time. <laughs> I took, like, Aww. different people with me each time, and they cried, too. <laughs> That's always fun. Hey, Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I just showed Sandy the um, Damon Nightman song clip. And, From uh, It's Always, it's always sunny. sunny in Philadelphia. They're not in lockdown there. <laughs> Maybe Stop they should it. be. Oh my God. Her father, who's a sort of dotty old hypochondriac who always wants everything just so. Um, he's played by Bill Nye in the movie and he's perfect. <gasps> I really want to watch he this movie He steals now. the show. All right, um, we're watching He's it. amazing. Right um, now. Turn that off. We're just going to watch it. <laughs> And you should too. Um, no, he's super bummed that Mrs. Weston is leaving. Because <laughs> he just wants to keep, <laughs> you know, because he loves having people around um, to just do what he wants, but also to, you know, take care of him and give him attention. That's what his daughter's for. Well, yeah. So he's bummed that Mrs. Weston is leaving, but when he talks about it, he frames it like, poor Miss Taylor, she'll hate leaving us. Like, her life will be worse now that she's not with us constantly. <sighs> I love knowing that Bill Nye plays them. Yeah. That's all I'm picturing. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's really just him hating change. As Mrs. Weston's life is hardly going to get worse now that she's off to live with the love of her life in her own house. Emma is comforting him that they'll see Mrs. Weston almost every day as they've only just moved down the road. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but she's still pretty bummed herself. Well, I guess she's too old for a governess now. 20? Yeah, yeah. She, she, you know, you wouldn't get a replacement, I think. At that yeah. Point. While this is happening, their neighbor and Emma's brother-in-law, Mr. Knightley, pops by. Um, her big sister married his, I think, little brother? Brother, yeah. His brother. That's fine. So he's just got back from visiting the pair in London. He approves of Mrs. Weston's marriage to Mr. Weston, but chides Emma when she takes credit for the match. Well, she she did it, apparently. <laughs> Emma brushes him off, saying she's going to find the village rector a wife next. Um, the village rector's name is Mr. Elton. What? A village what now? Rector? Um, pastor? Pastor? Priest man. Oh, priest man. <laughs> Jesus speaker. <laughs> the only... The Jesus whisperer in town. <laughs> the Jesus whisperer. <laughs> Um, so, who is Mr. Weston, the man our favourite governess is marrying? Well, his first marriage was to a woman named Miss Churchill, who was higher class than him. They had a son, Frank, um, but... What? Um, Mr. Weston's brother and sister-in-law, heart, so Mrs. Churchill's brother and sister, heartily disapproved of the match. Because she was high class then, then Mr. Weston. Why is that bad? I don't know. England's weird. Oh, I guess when... if a woman is higher class than you, then it's like, oh. Mm. oh. And like, oh, he's trying to get their money? <laughs> Name? I don't know. Anyway, she died, unfortunately. What about After three baby? years of marriage. And Frank was taken by the brother and sister, the 
his uncles. What? Uncle and aunt. Oh. Um, That's his baby. So his wife dies, and now they take away his baby. They take away his baby. Great. Not, it's possible, yeah, but to raise him as an heir, they could give him a uh, fancy education. Um, Mr. Weston is left in the lurch money-wise. I'm not sure if he spent all his money somehow. I'm not or didn't get any of her inheritance or anything. But anyway, he spends the next 20 years of his life rebuilding his fortune. So he's doing fine now. And he eventually purchased a house named Randall's, where he and Mrs. Weston are now going to live. So unfortunately, he's a little bit estranged from his son, Frank Churchill. All right, you with me so far? Hang on. To recap, (laughs) uh, Mr. Weston had classy broad for a wife, died after three years. His son... Got taken away by his, by the wife. Brother and sister-in-law, yeah. Yeah, brother and sister-in-law. So he's estranged from that son. Mr. Weston is fine. He's still got a fortune. He just bought He a built house. it back up, yeah. After built him. it back up. How old is the son now? 23. Oh, perfect Emma age. <laughs> That's what Emma thinks as well. What? <laughs> so apparently Frank has written a letter lately that indicates he's going to pay his father and his father's new bride a visit, right? Which is the respectful thing to do, by the way. How old is Mr. What's his face? Huh? How old is this? Mr. Weston? Yeah. Like 40s, you reckon? Oh, I say older. With a 23 year old son. Oh. Late 50s? Wouldn't you think? So he's like 20 years older than his new wife. No, I don't. I think. I think. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, she, she, we decided she was like 30 or something, right? Yeah, this doesn't matter. I'm just. It's fairly is just, standard, I would say. Like yeah. Then. yeah. Anyway. Um, naturally, the village is abuzz with this, as everyone is very curious to see what kind of man this Frank Churchill is. It's Paul Brunn! <laughs> One night, the Woodhouses throw a small dinner party. Um, Wood Mr. High. Wo- the Wood High. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Woodhouse couldn't bear a big one. Just wouldn't, wouldn't do. Um, and this is where we meet some of the other members of their social circle. So there's the old widow, um, Mrs. Bates, and, um her single middle-aged daughter miss bates who cannot ever stop talking oh so they suck those two then they're a bit silly um there's also mrs goddard who's the mistress of the local girls boarding school um emma's obviously too rich and high class to go yeah um so she brings along one of her boarders at the school a pretty sweet kind of dumb teenager named harriet smith whose parentage is unknown she was just sort of dropped off on a doorstep somewhere as a baby Oh, she's, it's Harry Potter. She is a little bit Harry Potter, and now she's going to this girls' boarding school. And which has, is she like, got, has she got like a scar? Yeah. Um. And but but it's like there's no magic, and it's really sad. And, and she just learns how to, I don't know, needlepoint. Oh. <laughs> Instead of magic, anyway. <laughs> Emma thinks Harriet is perfect to be her new friend. Oh yay! Um, and determines to make friends with her and kind of make her over into someone who fits into Emma's high oh class my God. society. It's cool. Brittany Murphy. So one Who's of the Dion. <laughs> well, one of the things. Oh, Dion. They're not in it. Oh. Unfortunately, I guess they could be the Westons a little bit, but I guess. Anyway, one of the things she does to pursue this is to encourage Harriet to break off her relationship with the Martins, who are a family of wholesome salt of the earth farmers who she stayed with the previous summer. Emma is displeased to hear that Harriet is close with their son, the eligible bachelor farmer, Robert Martin. Wait, no, there's another hottie on the block? There's multiple hotties. There's There's, multiple hotties? This is hottie central. Okay, so Um, if Paul Rudd is Frank, who's this one? Well. Is this one Zac Efron? What's happening? (laughs) Um, This is the stoner. That she yeah. has oh, a crush on. Oh, Garfield's owner. <laughs> Whatever. The um, you know what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Doesn't Brittany Murphy have a crush on the stoner? Yeah, yeah, it's Garfield's owner. <laughs> like in the live action Garfield. Really? Yeah. <laughs> John Arbuckle. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's him, right? I was right, right? Alana, okay. Show Sandy. Oh, Breck and Meyer! <laughs> oh, I love him. He was in Kate Leopold. Yeah. He was, I wanted to cast someone from last week as him. Yeah, he's Kate and Leopold. He was like, you want to vex my sister. <laughs> 
Oh, he's adorable. Yeah. Well, he's he's Robert Martin. Let's just cast him. <laughs> yeah. And he's not a hottie, though, but... You know, he's cute. Fine. You know? He's also not a naughty, so... <laughs> Midly. Midly. Cutie. Um, cutie. So she... So she suspects that Harriet has feelings for Robert Martin. Yeah. And she feels that the Martins are socially beneath Harriet. I'm not sure why. I think the possibility exists that at least one of Harriet's parents is wealthy or genteel, as no one kind of knows who they are and someone's paying for her to go to school. So anyway, Emma starts casually dissing Robert Martin (laughs) to try and get Harriet to drop him. Harriet is obviously super impressed and intimidated by Emma. She hangs off every word she says, so this tactic works maybe a bit too well. Oh, no. I'm so excited for the part where um, Brittany Murphy says, well, you're just a virgin who can't drive. Because I want to <laughs> know what the like English version of that is. Like, well, I don't think that exists. You're just a silly nitwit that can't ride a horse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Should we start saying that to people? <laughs> you can't ride a you horse. You can't ride a horse. Um, so Emma asks about Robert Martin's wealth and education, implying that if Harriet were to marry him, she wouldn't be able to be friends with Emma anymore, as she what? would be too below her station. Like, you can't sit with me. Emma. After they run into Mr. Martin on one of their walks, and Harriet looks a bit too stoked, Emma encourages Harriet to compare him to Mr. Elton, the preacher that she was going to find a wife for, remember? Bro, how old is this preacher? Oh, a bit older than them. So, wait. Late so 20s? If she's trying to set... Brittany Murphy up at the preacher. It's the preacher, that guy, Elton, in the movie, the one... The oh, one. yeah, Elton. Yeah, it's Mr. Elton. <gasps> yeah. Oh, my so God. He'll be named after Elton, yeah. Oh, my God. The one that's like, uh, can I go back to the quad? I left my cranberry CD there. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> I really like Clueless. Clueless is a great movie, and this is a great book. Yeah, you almost divorced your husband over it. <laughs> I was trying to start feminist shit on Twitter, and then the only person who took the bait was my husband. You literally have, like, 50 followers, that's why. But I I only have 23. It was just like, not you! (laughs) Not you! (laughs) I wanted to have an argument, but not with you. Not with you. That's what you'll put on the divorce papers. (laughs) Aw, no. Okay, so she's like, sorry, I just love this. I know. She's like, how much nicer Elton's posture is, his clothing, um, etc., compared to Mr. Martin's. So now, on a visit to Mr. Weston, Mr. Knightley talks to him about Emma's new friendship with Harriet. Mr. Knightley doesn't like it. It will make them both um, more arrogant, he thinks. Who's Mr. Knightley again? Her brother-in-law. So her big sister married his little brother. Oh, yeah. Who is this? Is this character in Clueless? I'm not going to say. Wait, it's not Paul Rudd. It's Paul Rudd. (laughs) But you said her sister married him. Her sister married his brother. Their brother oh, and sister-in-law. So I just... I don't... I don't understand much. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get it now, though? Yes. So his brother and her sister married living in London. Okay, so it's not as incestuous as Clueless. Stepbrother. Then. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. It's... Yeah, it's brother-in-law. That's fine. Keep it in the family. <laughs> yeah. But but the movie did try to make a point like he wasn't really my brother because yeah. he wasn't really my dad's son. <laughs> he he it was he married the wife. <laughs> We're not related by blood. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. So I think yeah, in Jane Austen's time, you would have never had it be that edgy. This is as edgy as it would have gone. <laughs> it's pretty edgy. Oh my god. Yes. Okay. Paul Rudd. Here we go. Mm-hmm. So Knightley talks to so his name's Knightley. Paul Rudley. Yeah. <laughs> Knightley, Nightman. <laughs> <laughs> Fighter of the day, man. Yeah. Oh, so glad you're into it. <laughs> it's your new favorite show after that one oh, clip. I have known nothing about it except for that. You I don't need it. any context for that show ever. <laughs> so Mr. Knightley doesn't like that Emma and Harriet are now bosom buddies. Um, mm-hmm. It'll make them both more arrogant, he thinks. Because oh Emma will, like, lap up the adoration and the attention, mm-hmm. and then Harriet might grow, and this is a quote, just refined enough to be uncomfortable with those among whom birth and circumstance have placed at home. So she's going to think herself better than yeah. like, she is. Well, he's not wrong. Because <laughs> yeah. Emma's already saying dumb shit. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Weston thinks he's talking shit. 
<laughs> um, he's like, Emma will improve Harriet. She's already like teaching. Uh, um, is this like uh, her... the governess's husband? Yes. Why are they all friends? This is weird to me. The town is so small and there is no TV. <laughs> I can't oh. express there. <laughs> your neighbors are your TV, remember? That's true. Yeah. Disturbia. Yeah. So Mr. Weston thinks he's talking shit. Um, he's like, Emma will improve Harriet's manners and everything. Um, and by teaching Harriet, um, Emma will be forced to learn more herself. So like, she's even like started a book club or something for her and they're going to read classics and stuff to get the to like improve their minds. So they're starting a podcast. Mm, maybe. <laughs> Which one of us is Emma? <laughs> and I don't think it works. I don't think it fits. We're we're um Are we the Stoner kids? Am I John Martin? Martin? <laughs> <laughs> the, are, are you Garfield? <laughs> I am Paul Rudd. No. Yeah. <laughs> fuck off. You're not Paul Rudd. <laughs> fuck off. What the fuck off? <laughs> You're not Paul. Get out of here. <laughs> Scram. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> um, and then Niley says something really funny. He says something like, um, Emma's been planning to read more since she could read. <laughs> Which I love. Um, anyway, they agree to disagree. Noting Emma's declaration that she will never marry. Because oh. she kind of doesn't have to. She'll That's... inherit her father's house. What? That's allowed? And he, Yeah, he only had two daughters and one of them's married. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so she'll just take care of him until he dies and she'll just be fine. He has, well, like, a fortune. Because so remember in P&P? Yeah. They, they couldn't... They... But their dad didn't have any money. And they weren't going to inherit the estate because it was entailed to the next male. And this one isn't entailed to the next male. No. What's So you can just do that. They could have just not done it. Yeah, but they did. So well, I don't know why. fucking stupid. Yeah. Legal stuff. I think, that, you know. Anyway. But yeah, Emma, Emma's like... I'm fine, man. Oh, she is fine. Good yeah, she is. Just wait for Bill Nye to die. All good. <laughs> Be oh. sad though. I don't want Bill Nye to die. Me neither. Nye, the man. <laughs> Nye, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> it's gonna be so much oh of this. My God. I'm sorry, Alana. Um. Uh, uh. <laughs> No, yeah, so noting that um, she's declared she'll never marry and that she doesn't have very many suitable prospects anyway, Mr. Knightley comments that he should like to see Emma in love and in some doubt of a return. It would do her good. Oh, Paul Rudd's right here. <laughs> now the gals with a Z have started hanging out on the reg with a G and inviting... What else would it be? <laughs> and inviting Mr. Elton over to hang with them. I don't know how that works back in that day, but he's there. Yo, anyway. priest. You want to read some passages? <laughs> well, it's... Hang on. I'm adjusting. <laughs> Emma is convinced he's already in love with her friend. He praises Harriet a lot for the graces and refinements that Emma has helped teach her. Mm. And when Emma suggests she ought to paint a little watercolor portrait of Harriet, he's immediately on board. <laughs> some photo. He's like, I wanted it in my locker because you took it. I'm like, it doesn't fucking work like that, Elton. <laughs> it's not like she's fucking. What's her face? Well, who's that famous? Oh, um, and and Leibovitz. Leibovitz, yeah. <laughs> um, so he like hovers at her shoulder while she's painting it and praises it a lot. And then I was like, yes, he's really into her. He thinks she's really pretty. Did they cast super cute boys in the new Emma? No. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. They all just kind of look English. Apparently, no. the Gwyneth Paltrow and Mr. Knightley is super hot, though. According to my mom. And <laughs> she ought to know. Ew, are you tell- saying your dad's hot? No. Oh. kind of did. Oh, I can't. Oh. <laughs> 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 the scream. <laughs> oh, Alana's looking it up. She's on it. Is he hot? Who is? Mr. Yeah. Is that the new one or the he, old that's one? That's the new one. He's not that hot, but like he's really when you see when you see him like in his acting and yeah. his mannerisms, he's like, yeah. Like he's cute. Okay. Let's keep he's going. He's got you know, he could be a boyfriend. He's praising it a lot. He's like, what a great likeness. And Mr. Knightley's like, oh, you made her prettier than she really is. Who said that? <laughs> Mr. Knightley. Fucking Paul Rudd. Yeah. And she's like, who me? And Elton's like, no, she got her exactly right. It's perfect. <laughs> Oh. So she's like, fuck yeah, Elton thinks Harriet's like, the prettiest obviously ever. Obviously you would think that Elton's into Harriet then. <laughs> and this continues when he volunteers to take the painting to London to get it framed, especially. Emma's like, just fine at painting, by the way. Oh my god, is it like, um, I don't know if you've ever seen... <laughs> the painting in the movies are really funny. Like, it's I'm so just, excited. Like, fine. <laughs> like, it's fine. Oh my god. And like, the framing like... gets in the movie has, like, doors. <laughs> Bro, 
Like the fucking painting of the dead girlfriend of that guy. Yes. Yes, like that. It's like, it's fine. <laughs> now, Harriet receives a letter from Robert Martin proposing marriage. What? And she immediately takes the letter to Emma for advice. Emma refuses to give her any advice, only yeah. saying that a general rule is that a woman is, if a woman is unsure if she should say yes, then she ought to say no. Harriet. Well, though, she would have said yes before Emma was like, he's poor and yucky. <laughs> yes, exactly. Harriet, though she's in- initially really excited, kind of gets crestfallen and says mm. she'll refuse him. After which Emma congratulates her on making the right choice. Oh my god. Oh, is there a makeover scene in this one? No. Whatever. Okay. Um, See, she, Clueless is just so much better yeah. already. <laughs> she helps her draft a negative reply. Harriet <laughs> is a bit bummed still, so Emma tries to cheer her up by talking about Mr. Elton. Later, on a regular visit, Mr. Knightley and Emma are chatting, and the subject of Robert Martin comes up, with Mr. Knightley revealing that Martin, one of his own tenant farmers, by the way... Super rich. Um, yeah, he, like, he has people living on his land, and he, like, takes their rent. And... Oh, you fucking serious? So, John Arbuckle is rich? No, 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 no. Um, no, he, he rents from um, Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd's rich. Oh, Paul Rudd's rich. So he's like a tenant of Paul Rudd's, <laughs> Mr. Knightley's. And so he, he pays rent to Mr. Knightley, but he, they're also like, you know, the kind buds. of bros. They're like, hey. Yeah, they're chums. The neighbors, bros. you know? They're like Yeah, friends. Paul Rudd and John Arbuckle. Yeah. Maybe they smoke a little weed. I don't know. <laughs> they probably do. <laughs> they probably do. So Robert Martin asked Mr. Knightley advice about proposing to Harriet, and Mr. Knightley said he should go for it. He's like, that's a great idea. Yeah, do you guys it. are great. Good for each other. Do it, man. Yeah. Just, just follow, be follow honest. Your heart, man. <laughs> um, Emma lets Mr. Knightley know that the proposal has been rejected, oh, and bro. he gets really pissed because he knows it's her fucking fault. <laughs> <laughs> he knows she orchestrated the refusal, is what I wrote. He reckons it's the best offer Harriet will get. Moreover, <laughs> Martin loves her, but Emma is convinced Harriet is too good for Martin. That's so rude. Knightley states flatly, you have been no friend to Harriet Smith. Wow, Paul Rudd. Knightley tells Emma that if she thinks Mr. Elton will marry Harriet, (laughs) he immediately knows what her plan is. She's wrong because Elton will only marry a woman with money. Um, They stalk away from each other fuming. Harriet turns up a little while later bearing goss that Elton is on an important errand to London, possibly to get a ring. Yeah, because I don't know why she's so hot on setting her up with Elton. He's a, like a priest, so he wouldn't have money. No, he's a gentleman as well. Oh, he's a prentleman. <laughs> he's a prentel. He's a he's a geest. Geest. Um, geestleman. Geest. <laughs> he's he's a he, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Emma and Harriet have a new project: <gasps> writing a bunch of riddles in a book and getting everyone they know to contribute a riddle. Why? Because it's so boring to be a human person in the past. I would rather be in this version of the past than, like, the Vivitch past. Yeah, fair, like fair. That, that, at least then you don't have to, like, go out and grow corn and then pray to God and like, not to... You know, either starve with your stupid family or be a witch. you have servants, yeah. But then you have, you know, the devil's kind of hot. Yeah, but also if you have no corn to grow and no, like, devil to avoid, then all you have to do is, like fucking write down riddles in a book i'm trying to think of what i would do back in those <laughs> ages and it's just like you got no phone don't have my phone <laughs> <laughs> i can't bring my phone with me to the past <laughs> well fuck maybe you could do pottery mm. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay when Elton comes back from London, he comes with the framed portrait of Harriet and a riddle that he's written, um, but which he pretends is written by me? a friend. In, inside is an encoded amorous message, so the answer to the riddle is like courtship or something. Oh. Um, and Emma assumes this is for Harriet, right? Oh, no! <laughs> Another time they run into him while they're walking back from a charitable visit to a poor family. Oh, yeah. And she's like, oh, shit, yeah. And so she lags behind pretending that she needs to like tie her shoe she's got like flats on (laughs) to give him a chance to propose to harriet oh my goodness but he doesn't oh fuck (laughs) she's disappointed but she like chalks it up to timidity or something she says something like oh maybe he's just slow (laughs) maybe god was just whispering in his ear at that moment couldn't hear it isabella who dad emma's sister what and her family john knightley and the kids (laughs) put in brackets lots (laughs) <laughs> oh, Isabel. So yeah, her big sister, John Knightley's brother, and Paul Rudd Senior. 
Okay. Yes. <laughs> and, the, and their kids um, are coming for Christmas. Oh, fun. Yes. Isabella and her dad are basically the same person, nervy and sweet, and they argue over which of their personal doctor's disparate advice is the more correct. So they bicker about Mr. and Mrs. John Knightley says them. Um, Isabella and John's decision to go to South End, a beach resort, um, over the autumn instead of visiting Grandpa. Well, the other thing sounds funner. Yeah, and well, and he's like, if you were going to go to the sea, you should have gone to this other beach resort that my doctor recommends. And she's like, well, my doctor recommended this one. Why would a doc? Why would you ask oh, for a vacation like? Because it was like from a because everything was like air. <laughs> so they'd be like, I prescribe you sea air <laughs> to you know for your sea air. for your tuberculosis or whatever the fuck you had. And then you die from tuberculosis because the sea <laughs> the air sea, does not fix it. It doesn't. You know, like little women. Oh. Oh, Beth. Oh, no. Anyway. Um... <laughs> <laughs> she just made a face. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Mr. Woodhouse advocates the advice of his friend, Mr. Perry, who's an apothecary. All the while, Isabella maintains that her doctor, Mr. Wingfield, is more trustworthy. Oh, my God. Etc. Eventually, Mr. John Knightley, so Isabella's husband, snaps that Perry should mind his own business. <laughs> Who's um, Perry? Perry's the doctor. Bill who's Knight? not even there. Bill oh. Nye's doctor. Who wasn't minding his own business. So he, yeah, he was saying, literally just in his it? own home. And then <laughs> he said like, that and he's, he's like, like, ow. He got like a chill. <laughs> like, he's like cutting ham. And he's like, Ugh. <laughs> um, John is very sensible to the point of being curt. And Emma thinks he's a bit too stern with Isabella and her father. She's like, chill out. Miss Knightley comes over to hang with the fam. Um, oh, the his na- his first name's George. So there's John Knightley, who's her sister's husband, and then okay. George Knightley's like her Mr. Knightley. What? Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd. Mm-hmm. And who 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 came? Mrs. What? Mr. Knightley's come over. Oh, Paul Rudd. Okay. Paul Rudd's come over to hang with the fam, and they put their argument behind them, um, about like Harriet and Martin, um, and they agree to disagree. Mm-hmm. In a last jab, however, Knightley tells Emma how disappointed Martin was by Harriet's rejection of him. Well, duh. During the evening, you know, to make her feel bad. Well, yeah. During the evening, Isabella inquires about Jane Fairfax, the niece of Mrs. Bates. You remember the two annoying ladies? Um, mm-hmm. Mrs. Bates and her middle-aged daughter, Miss Bates? Yeah, the spinsters. Yeah, okay. So, the niece of them, Jane Fairfax, um, who Isabella says would be a good companion for Emma. Like lesbians? No, like a friend. Oh. You guys should hang out. You'd be good friends. Um, apparently people have been saying this Emma's whole life, as the two girls are like the same age, live in the same town, around the same social standing. Who's Isabella? Is it Dion? Oh, Jane Fairfax. Jane Sorry. Fairfax. Sorry. Okay. Ja- who's Jane? Is Jane Dion? So Jane is someone... Not really. Oh. Jane is someone living in the town. Okay. Who everyone's saying she would get along with Emma really well because they're the same age, they live in the same town, they're around the same social standing. Okay, so, so Emma hates Jane. <laughs> oh, with the unique hate of like a child, people are trying to force to make friends. Oh, Jane is um that other tryhard. Uh, what's her name in okay. Clueless? The the one you know, the, like the antagonist. <laughs> everyone is invited to Randall's, which is the home of Mr. and Mrs. Weston, for dinner on Christmas Eve. Harriet and Mr. Elton are also invited. Ooh. But Harriet comes down with a sore throat and has to self-isolate. <laughs> oh, Kill me. Emma runs into Elton when they're both visiting Harriet. Which Emma is stoked about because it means he cares about Harriet. She says maybe he should skip the party too since Harriet won't be there. I can't remember her pretext. Maybe he offhandedly said he wasn't feeling too hot or something. But he ignores her advice and comes anyway, which bothers her. She's like, why do you want to come to the party if your crush isn't there? Because <laughs> that's not his crush, <laughs> Emma. Um, big bro, Knightley. Okay. Paul, S- Paul Rudd Sr. Yep. yep. Sees the exchange and suggests that Elton might have a crush on Emma. Yeah. Emma is like, yeah, right. <laughs> it's very 90s of her. But Elton is too cheerful for her liking, considering that Harriet is sick at home. Yeah. At the party, Elton hovers around her so much that she starts to worry Big Bro Knightley's suggestion is correct. <laughs> Big Bro Knightley, I like that. <laughs> just to differentiate. Meanwhile, yeah. everyone is just last names and half of them have the same last names. It's fucking stupid, right? Yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, Mr. Weston announced Frank's going to be coming down in early January. Who the fuck is Frank? Frank Churchill, Mr. Weston's estranged son. 23. Oh. Wait, so that's not Paul Rudd then? 
I thought that would be Paul Rudd. Who's this? Who's Frank? Wait, let me think back to Clueless. The guy with the suit. What's his name? <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> oh, the one that turns out to be gay. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, the cool guy. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's super into, like, the rap pack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so... He's going to be coming down in early January. Emma's keen. She's like half seriously thought about Frank Churchill becoming the new Mr. Emma. Mr. Though, Emma! <laughs> though she doubts he'll be dreamy enough to give up her plan to stay single for her whole oh, life. Oh, just you wait. But she's still curious, you know. Mrs. Weston confides in her ex-student Emma that she's a bit nervous about meeting her new stepson and worries Mr. Churchill will... Pro- uh, Mrs. Churchill, his... Um, his aunt, you know, the... The one that raised him, yeah. yep, um, Will prevent him from coming. Mm. Um, she, she's apparently been ill since she could say so. <laughs> like, the aunt has been ill. Yeah, but it's like implying that she fakes it to oh, get she what just, she wants. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh. Mm. <laughs> and I just like that turn of phrase. She's been ill since she could say she was ill. <laughs> when John Knightley, Big Bro Knightley, announces that it is snowing, everyone flips their shit. Plates <laughs> smashed. Tables flip. Not really, but everyone is stressed that the carriages might get stuck in the snow oh, I thought on the way they home. were excited about the snow. They're like, fucking snow! <laughs> no, 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 they're stressed because <laughs> if, if it's too deep, then the carriages won't be able to get home and Randall's doesn't have enough rooms for everyone to stay oh the night. Oh my god. Sleep But the <laughs> no, they have the share beds, <laughs> boy. While all the panic sleep. is happening... Nightly, the younger, has enough time to go outside, do some quick meteorology, determine that there's nothing to fear, and come back in to calm everyone Thank the shit down. Up. Unfortunately, due oh. to carriage pool shenanigans, Emma ends up sharing a ride home with just Mr. Elton. Oh no. Oh no, he's gonna kick her out <laughs> and she's gonna get, like, held up in, like, LA and she has to, she has to, like, ruin her dress. It's Armani. No, it's not. Oh, Calvin Klein? No. What was it? It's, like, a different designer. All right, anyway. A, a, a liar. <laughs> That's like a dress. That. Who says so? Calvin Klein. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's an liar. It's an liar. She's, sorry, and she's like, and she's like, she's like, mm. <laughs> she's so good. I don't now. I just want to watch Clueless. Yeah, but we're gonna watch Mary Poppins if the girls are up to it because oh. Isabel's never seen it. Oh yay! And I love it. And I had to it's watch. So well, I had to. Well, I watched Wizard of Oz, which I hadn't seen. Sure, sure, sure. So yeah, now it's, it's a good. It's a good exchange. Yeah, I think Mary Poppins is take. better. Ooh, girl, spicy. A hot take. Things are heating up <laughs> in the ye olde musical fandom. So we're in the carriage with Mr. Elton oh and my Emma. God, yes, here we go. He declares his love for her and oh, proposes fuck. because, of course, he does. She's like, shut up, you're just drunk, you're in love with Harriet. And he's like, who? Ah! <laughs> she reminds him he's in love with Harriet, which he takes as a personal insult because one, Harriet is below his station and he oh. feels he's too good for her. And Bro. two, he feels like Emma has been encouraging his attentions when this whole time she thought she was encouraging his attentions to Harriet. I wrote, ugh. <laughs> it is very bad. <laughs> so she's like, well, I'm not going to fucking marry you. And they travel the rest of the way home in angry silence. Oh, no. I'm obviously paraphrasing. But... Well, I'm glad he... <laughs> Then throw her out <laughs> into the yeah, cold. Yeah, she doesn't get robbed. She doesn't get robbed. Her Aliyah doesn't get ruined. <laughs> her Aliyah's fine. Hang, hang but then do the you closet. remember she had to call Paul Rudd to pick her up? And yeah. Paul Rudd had this like feminist girlfriend that had like a side beret. <laughs> now, Emma contends with her mortification and also with the prospect of having to tell Harriet the truth about her crush. She vows to give up matchmaking. She realized it was her who put Harriet in this position. Harriet, like John Arbuckle, just let them be together. <laughs> um, by inventing and then encouraging her crush. But she's also like, lol, neither of Elton's nor Harriet's feelings could possibly be that strong since no one else seemed to notice them. <laughs> I wrote, she's riggedy riggedy wrong. <laughs> <laughs> ah, to be 20 and wrong. <laughs> Isabella and John return to London. And Mr. Elton <laughs> writes Mr. Woodhouse to let him Wait, know. who's Mr. what? Mr. Woodhouse is um, Bill Nye, Emma's dad. Who's Miss, who writes him? Who's Mr. Mr. Arden? Elton. Oh, Elton. I thought you said, because he spoke, he, this is how you said it. Mr. Elton. <laughs> I'm like, oh! Mr. Elton, the priest, writes to Mr. Woodhouse, the father, yes. to let him know that he'll be spending the next few weeks in Bath, which is a town. Emma is like, thank God, and goes over to Harriet's to explain the situation. Harriet is modest and sweet in taking the news, making Emma think that Harriet, rather than herself, is a superior creature. 
Wow, I think she I learned know, a lesson. Humbled, like, kind of, but oh. <laughs> not really. <laughs> the rest of the times they hang out in Hartville, Emma tries to distract Harriet and put Elton out of her mind, though she knows it's going to suck for Harriet when he comes back. Meanwhile, Frank Churchill flakes on his firewheel and doesn't make his expected visit to the Westerns. Did Harriet even really like Elton that much, or was she just like, oh, yeah? I don't know. I think she liked John Arbuckle more. Emma, though she's preoccupied and doesn't really care is warm and enthusiastic in comforting the westerns and expressing her own disappointments about the situation mm. which gets her into an argument with mr knightley his question is how can a 23 year old man um be pressured by his aunt a little old lady from doing his duty by his father and his father's new wife it's kind of an insult to mrs weston specifically that he hasn't been to visit them yet because it's yeah, just like saying fuck you and Paul Rudd's like, hang on, there's more going on here. <laughs> is that what's happening? No, no, he's like, he could come if he wanted to. Oh, is that what, is that what That's Paul what Rudd... Mr. Knightley's saying. Just and stop she's... calling him Mr. Knightley. Paul... Just call him Paul Rudd. That's You're what Paul Rudd so is saying. for me. Why are they called Miss... She's called Emma and everyone else is Mr. Miss, Mr. It's so confusing. <laughs> if anything, I call know. them by their first names. I know. Okay, George. His name's George. Well, this is new information. No, it's not. I told you before, and we have evidence. <laughs> um, delete it. <laughs> okay, and what's Emma saying? Well, how are they arguing about this when fucking George slash Paul Rudd is right? She's saying, oh, no, he, you know, you don't know what it's like to have to be a carer for someone. Like, he's a carer for his aunt who's sick. <laughs> like, he can't just Fake go sick. off when he wants. <laughs> That's what Mr. Knightley says. But he can't just go off whenever he wants to, you know? You don't know what it's like to have dependence. Knightley reckons... He doesn't come because he doesn't want to. Mm. Poor Rudd. Emma predicts that when Frank arrives in Highbury, he'll be perfectly charming. Knightley thinks it's more likely that he'll be super- superficial and insufferable. Emma is wondering what Knightley's problem is. <laughs> he doesn't want a new hottie in town. <laughs> His hottie status is threatened. <laughs> While walking along with Harriet one day, Emma has difficulty shifting her thoughts from Mr. Elton. Shifting oh. Harriet's thoughts from Mr. Elton. So she suggests... That they visit Mrs. and Miss Bates. A Judy Emma usually hates because Miss Bates' soup's annoying. Are these the spinsters? Yeah. Yeah. Dur- I think one's a widow. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and the daughter's a spinster. Sp- potato spinster, whatever. <laughs> potato p- spinster. <laughs> spinster. <laughs> <laughs> During the visit, unfortunately, Miss Bates feels the need to talk about Mr. Elton and his travels. Uh-oh. Also, while Emma has tried to time her visit to avoid hearing about Jane Fairfax... Bro... A letter has just come from oh, Jane Fairfax. From Jane herself. Fairfax, and she manages to squeeze just every every minute of conversation you could possibly squeeze out of that letter. She does. It's just insufferable. Where is Jane? Why can't they just meet? Like, why can't they just mano a mano? It. So They're Jane, in the same fucking town. Jane's guardians for the present. They're actually not. Jane's guardians for the present are a Colonel and a Mrs. Campbell, who are about to visit their newly married daughter, Miss Di- Mrs. Dixon, in Ireland. Just don't worry about that. Jane won't go, but will come to stay with her aunts in Highbury instead. So she's coming soon, is the moral of that story. She's coming. Based on not very much evidence at all, except that Jane isn't going to Ireland, Emma speculates that Jane was involved in a romance with the daughter's new husband. <laughs> yeah, yep, that's exactly it. <laughs> so who is Jane Fairfax? Finally. Is she, she was... Rosamund Pike? Ooh, yeah. Like a young rosy <laughs> Just because she's Jane? <laughs> She was orphaned at age three when her father was killed in battle. I wrote Napoleonic in brackets. <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> and her mother died of TB and grief, which one finished her off? Who's to say? TB. The grief just kind of <laughs> tipped her over the edge. Oh, you may be right. She lived with her aunt and grandmother, the Bateses, in Highbury until she was eight before being taken on by the colonel, an old comrade of her father's in the war, where he died. Yep, um, Napoleonic, yep, question mark. Napoleonic, question mark, who took an interest in her. So he provided her with an education, but he's not able to give her an inheritance, right? Because they're not related. So she's got no money. Great. When Jane comes of age, therefore, she will be a governess, which is a bummer for a London gentlewoman, but there you have it. Bummer. Her stay in Highbury will, will be her last taste of freedom before she has to skip uh, ship out to work. Ship out to work. That's me every Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> last taste of freedom. When Jane arrives, Emma isn't super thrilled, <laughs> which <laughs> Mr. Knightley, Paul Rudd, puts down to jealousy. Yeah. Jane is beautiful. She, she is, she is wary of the new hot. They're both wary they're of, the, of the, the new hotties. hotties in town. 
And Jane is beautiful and talented musically. She's a great pianist, a great singer. Still, hanging out with her sucks because she's so reserved and her family is so annoying. So mm. Emma's dislike for her is solidified. She learns that when in Weymouth the camp with the Campbells, the general, the colonel, whatever, Jane knew Frank Churchill. But Jane won't talk about it as Emma because she's super reserved. She's Who's Frank like, Churchill? Frank Churchill's the new male hottie coming. Mr. Oh, Western. okay. So I, I don't think there's a Jane character in Clueless. No, I don't think there is. I don't think yeah. so. Too complicated. Um, one afternoon, as Mr. Knightley, Paul Rudd, has come to visit Emma with some goss. Ooh. The Bateses arrive with Jane in tow, bent on thanking Mr. Woodhouse for a hind quarter of pork he sent them. Who's I think Mr. that Woodhouse? people just used to send each other food. Who's Mr. Woodhouse? Mr. Woodhouse is Bill Nye, Emma's dad. Bill Nye, thank you. It's just... It, some people are in first names, and some are in last names. I know. And it's fucking stupid. <laughs> I know. All right. Let's just watch the movie. I'm sick. We're in lockdown. <laughs> We're in uh, lockdown from books. I know. Yes. Let's just have a question. <laughs> 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 no, just because you're saying that about the last names, do you think that Jane Austen wrote it that way out of respect for the characters? Or do you think that's just a reflection? Like, I that... think it's a reflection. Okay. Okay. So the people Emma knew by their first names are referred to by their first names. The people that Emma knows by their last names are referred to by their oh, last names. Oh, I guess names. that makes sense. So that's why it's just her and Harriet, basically, who have first names. That makes so much sense now. Yeah. I guess um, I just have no respect for anyone. That's fair. And, and, and I just kick flip on yeah, my Yeah, and Jane, they call Jane Fairfax, usually by her full name. Jane, Jane Fairfax. Fairfax. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. It's like the, the, the man, the myth, the legend, Jane Fairfax. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> So they spill the beans before Knightley has a chance, this goss, that Mr. Elton is to marry a lady named Miss Hawkins from Bath. Who that? Emma is disgusted. <laughs> what a quick turnaround, right? Like, he just that. met this lady and they're like married and like what? Well, he wants six weeks? money. He's not really super rich. He's rich in God, but not rich in money. <laughs> um, well, she doesn't respect that at all. Well, she's 20. Mr. I don't <laughs> care what she thinks. <laughs> Mr. Knightley, poor Red. <laughs> Do I have to say that every time? Yes, it really helps. Catches her look, seeming to divine that something happened between Elton and Emma. Mm. She tries to engage Jane Fairfax in conversation to no avail, and the three ladies leave. Harriet bursts in with the news that she ran into Mr. Martin and his sisters in town. Um, Brecken Meyer, what's her name? John Arbuckle. Oh, yeah. Mr. Martin. <laughs> There's so many people. I know. I'm sorry. Why am I sorry? I, I don't know. This. You didn't write this. <laughs> the Jane also just come through and was like, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not. <laughs> <laughs> That's her ghost. Just like... <laughs> flipping two birds. Kick flipping away with like sunny zone. Um, she would. Oh, good she for her. would. Good for her. Um, she actually, when she was talking about this book, she was like, I'm going to write a book with a heroine that none but myself will much like. Aww. <laughs> Which I was so cute. So. John Arbuckle and John Arbuckle J- ran and his sister ran Buckle into are in tar- Tarn. Yeah, ran, <laughs> Tarn. Ran into Brittany Murphy. Okay. Um, and though she was rather awkward and mortified, they were also nice to her and Robert even gave her advice on like avoiding a flooded route home because oh. it was rain. Emma is mildly impressed by the Martins' good-naturedness and has a, am I wrong about them? Yes. Moment. And then she's like, no, 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 it can't possibly be. <laughs> when does she have that moment where she um she goes shopping and she's really sad? She's like, maybe I am clueless. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of this moment, but then she's like, nah. Yeah, I know, that's what I was thinking. It is they that are the problem. <laughs> so in order to bring Harriet back to Earth, she tells her about Elton's impending marriage. Uh-huh. There's great speculation in the village as to the character of Mr. Elton's fiance. Mr. Elton returns to the village just long enough to let everyone know that his bride to be is beautiful, accomplished, and rich. Emma hopes that his marriage will ease the awkwardness of his return, but she has some bitchy thoughts about Miss Hawkins' inferior connections. Um, it's hard to coach Harriet through this time. The only thing that stops her fretting about Mr. Elton is fretting about Mr. Martin. Oh. Classic. One yeah. of Mr. Martin's sisters leaves a note at Mrs. Goddard's the school. She's at school. Yeah. Um, for Harriet, meaning that Harriet will have to go visit them according to the politeness rules. 
Oh, so she has to go see John Arbuckle and Co. Yes. Emma reckons Harriet should only go for a very short visit just to reinforce the distance. Like, the new distance between herself and the family. Although she feels a little twinge of guilt, she's still certain that Harriet's too good for the Martins. Uh, Emma drops off Harriet and says she'll come back and pick her up in 15 minutes. It's a lovely <laughs> emotional visit for Harriet at first, but when it's cut short, it's clear to everyone that the Martins have been insulted. Well, yeah, bro. Mm-hmm. Emma, fucking fuck off for one second. <laughs> Emma is cheered up by a visit with the Westons, who bring the news that... Frank is coming to Highbury at last. Finally. The following day, she runs into him unexpectedly as he arrives <gasps> and is pleased to find he's good looking, bright, charming, kind of dressed like, dresses like Frank. <laughs> Hang on. Is he gay in this too? Because is that allowed back no, then? No, no, no. He's not gay in this. Oh, what else? Um, he dre- what was I going to say? He dresses like Frank Sinatra. Yeah, she bumps into the new hottie in town. Yeah, 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 yeah. He seems to have the right compliment for everyone, especially Mrs. Weston, which is very important to Emma. And I can see that Mr. Weston hopes that she and Frank will hook up. Um, And she wonders if Frank has thought about it at all. When his father leaves on an errand, he also leaves to pay a visit to Jane Fairfax, who you recall he met at Weymouth. Um, Yeah, and Jane didn't want to talk about it because she's all proper and boring. Mm. (laughs) Yes. So Frank Churchill, new hardy, and Mrs. Weston, um, former governess, Mm -hmm. visit Hartfield, Emma's house, the next day. He's lovely and charming, especially to his new stepmom, and is interested in learning everything about Highbury that the locals mm. know. So they walk around the village, and when they come across an unused ballroom, he suggests that they should organize a dance, <gasps> and dismisses Emma's qualms about the lack of worthy families to fill out such an event. Fucking hell, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> Emma inquires about his visit to Jane and the Bateses, and the two share impressions of Jane. He says she's unattractive and reserved, <laughs> which Emma is a bit stoked about. Um, he admits that she is talented, though, and admits um, they hung out a fair bit in Weymouth. So he knows her a little bit. But she's not cute, though, right? Well, he's like, eh. He's like, she's plain. She's plain, kind of quiet. Mm. You know, they're like, you know, bitching. Well, he's like a new gay best friend, except they're like, might get married, you know? He just so he's not, actually, he's not gay in this one? No, he's not. Because that's... Not allowed. You get, yep. You get sent to jail. You Oscar Wilde style. Oscar Wilde style. So, Emma shares her theory ill-advisedly about Mr. Dixon and Jane. Remember how she was like, oh, maybe she had a thing with the husband of her Yeah, she's stern shit. Yeah, she's stern shit. Um, Frank resists the idea at first, but then gives in to Emma's better knowledge of Jane. (laughs) Then he's like, no, but me. (laughs) Tell me more. (laughs) Um, Emma decides she likes Frank even more than she expected to. He's not so proud as she feared and every bit as warm as his father. He's like fun, you know? Yeah, he's fun. He's fun. The only, oh no, where's Paul Rudd? <laughs> the only thing that kind of hurts her image of him is when he makes a day trip all the way to London for the reason only of getting a haircut. Are you fucking kidding kind me? I'm like, you going to Toronto getting just for a haircut and everything? Oh, maybe because I've been going to the same hairdressers for like five years <laughs> and I believe in brand loyalty, you <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> We're going to have to write this one as explicit. (laughs) (laughs) We still have to put that in. (laughs) You redacted. (laughs) You. (laughs) Hey, man. (laughs) I'm I'm not (laughs) going to. Every time we have to bleep something out, just be like, (laughs) Fights are off the night, (laughs) man. Okay. Emma is still intent on remaining single, but she likes Frank enough to not mind being associated with him by other people. All right. All right. Mr. Knightley also reigns on Emma's parade, saying Frank is a silly young man, (laughs) just as he had predicted. Paul Rudd. Here he is. An invitation to a dinner party by the Coles's. Successful tradespeople. I don't know. Maybe they own a supermarket. (laughs) (sighs) Creates a problem for Emma. She had initially decided she wouldn't accept an invitation from them as they are simply nouveau rich and not really gentility. So it's not really appropriate for her to associate with them. Oh, they're new money and not old money. Mm -hmm. But when everyone except the Woodhouses is going, she gets major FOMO and decides to go anyway. (laughs) Emma arrives at the party behind Mr. Knightley, Paul Rudd. Mm -hmm. And she surprisingly notes that he has come in his carriage, which he doesn't usually bother with because this is a tiny English village. So why wouldn't you just walk everywhere? Is his position. Where she's like, uh, a carriage befits a gentleman. Like, and he's like, well, if you'd met me when I came inside, you wouldn't have found me less of a gentleman. That's what you mean, just Ubering everywhere. (laughs) Anyway, um, 
At dinner, Emma learns that Jane has received a mysterious gift, a piano. People assume it's from Colonel Campbell, you know, her old sort of guardian. Yeah. But Emma speculates that it's from Mr. Dixon. Oh my God, where did she even get this? <laughs> I don't even know. She was just like, I hate her. She's a homewrecker. That's what she is. <laughs> when Jane arrives later and is questioned about the piano, she blushes. Meanwhile, Mr. Weston tells Emma that the only reason Mr. Knightley brought the carriage was so that he could give Jane a lift home. Uh Uh-oh. Mrs. Weston suggests that Knightley and Jane may have a thing. (gasps) He certainly could afford the piano, but Emma's like, what? No. Oh my God, she's going to be jealous. No, 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 (laughs) no. Certainly not. No, nope. No. 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 You have been stopped. I wrote that all out. (laughs) Even the ha, ha, ha. No. She says she can't bear the thought of Mr. Knightley marrying because then her nephew, George and Isabella's oldest son, Henry, wouldn't be able to inherit Donwell Abbey, the Knightley estate. Yeah, that's exactly what she's worried about. That's exactly right. That's it. Emma and Jane sing and play the piano for the company in turn, and Jane is way better at it than Emma. Oh, no. Frank persuades Jane to sing one more song after her voice is growing hoarse, but Mr. Knightley intervenes on her behalf, making Emma doubt herself. Oh, no. She subtly questions Mr. Knightley about the carriage and the piano. And his answers convince her that he did not send the gift, but don't really enable her to tell either way what his feelings are. Oh, no. Jane. Oh, Emma. Later on in the night, impromptu dancing breaks out. Oh, bro. <laughs> Whoa. Um, <laughs> I just did a little dance. Wow, that is one of the whitest <laughs> I've ever seen. Like, you've got a buttoned up, like, oh, shirt, you've got this cardigan, and then you dared crump. <laughs> How dare you? You are, Missy. (laughs) Oh no, I'm in trouble. (laughs) (laughs) For those of you playing at home, uh, Sandy got here late and she was trying to help, but she was messing everything up. So I told her to stop. And she was like, oh no, I just got here. I'm already in trouble. (laughs) (laughs) I wasn't late. You guys, you guys have just gotten back. You're a liar. Well, your pie hole is a lie hole. (laughs) Well, you're in trouble. (laughs) Oh no. Your body's a trouble body. (laughs) 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 <laughs> okay so she's relieved he doesn't ask jane to dance knightley doesn't ask jane to mm-hmm. dance and is pleased that frank immediately asks her nice there's only time for two dances before the party breaks up for the night and frank comments that he's lucky the dancing came to an end otherwise he might have had to ask jane oh and, he doesn't like jane he <laughs> and thinks emma, she's boring and emma's like fuck yeah <laughs> suck it jane um and James' only crime, I might remind you, was just that people tell Emma she should like her. And also that she's boring. <laughs> well, like, she's reserved. She doesn't like... Boring. Shy. Boring. <laughs> and she's better at music than Emma is. Boring. You're Jane. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> boring, boring, boring. You're Jane. <laughs> because you're just like... Fuck she, you. <laughs> you were saying, she's not boring. She's, she's just good at music and she's smart and nice and stuff. And I'm just like, <laughs> fuck her. <laughs> That makes Fuck up. you. Is Alana um, Harriet? Oh, <laughs> no. And Brian is John Arbuckle. Wait, you're Emma? <laughs> just right now. Okay. Not usually, but just right now in this moment right. of time. Maybe I'm Paul Rudd. Uh... <laughs> when I said that, you were like, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> no, you're not. Um, Emma wakes up the next day pleased that she went to the Coles' party. She doubts that she should have told Frank her unfounded gossip about Jane and Mr. Dixon. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Maybe you should have done that. At dinner, Harriet heard that the Martins had dinner with the Coxes. And there's a room, you haven't heard of them before. And there's a rumor that Robert Martin might marry the top Cox's daughter. Uh Uh-oh. To distract Harriet from that idea, Emma goes shopping with her. And they decide to pay a visit to the Bates household. Great. But run into Frank on their way, who asks Great. if he can stay with the girls and send Mrs. Weston to make the visit to the Bateses instead on her own. Emma insists he go, knowing he'll visit her later in Hartfield anyway. Then Mrs. Bates comes into the shop to ask Emma to give her opinion of Jane's new piano. Piano. Oh, in her rambling, she reveals that Mr. Knightley sent his last apples of the season to Jane because <gasps> she's particularly fond of them. But my apples. And Emma and ourselves get to play the game of in love or just a good guy. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God, right? Is he flirting with me or is he just not rude? (laughs) (laughs) Uh. Uh, Emma arrives at the bases to find Frank there already fixing Mrs. Bates' glasses. That's nice. 
Yeah. And Jane is seated at the piano. Fuck you. <laughs> you no, know you hate Jane too. She's so... Okay. She's so perfect. <laughs> Stupid, perfect Jane with her magic ivory fingers. <laughs> Won't even talk shit about anyone. Bo. (laughs) Frank asks Jane questions about where she thinks the piano came from and says true affection only could have prompted it, which makes her blush. So Emma thinks he's being a little bitchy and she whispers that he should stop and regrets telling him about her speculations, re Mr. Dixon. Oh yeah, true. She's spreading these rumors on no like no grounds at all. She's like, (laughs) I hate her. She's a whore. (laughs) And then he's like, She's a whore. And she's like, shh, stop it. (laughs) Stop spreading this lie that I started. (laughs) Stop it, Frank. Mr. Knightley stops by to check on Jane's health. She's always sick or some shit. (laughs) Of course she is. (laughs) He has a shouted conversation on horseback through the window with Miss Bates. But he can't be invited inside once he realizes Frank is in there because he can't stand him. Oh my God. He's like, I've got horse business to attend to. (laughs) Frank, can't <laughs> one, <laughs> one day the Woodhouses, so Emma and her dad, are visiting Randall's, where the Westons live. Mm-hmm. Why is it called? I don't know. And Frank and Emma set about planning a ball so they can finish the dancing they started at the Coles. Oh, fun. Yeah. Um, like prom, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're the prom committee. <laughs> they really are. Oh, cute. They decide that the room at Randall's is too small for a proper ball. I just want to know why she doesn't end up with this. If he's not gay in this version, why don't they end up together? Mm-hmm. I guess well, we'll see. You will. We'll see, see with your see. eyeballs. What? With your ear holes. With my ear holes. <laughs> Mr. Woodhouse is worried about Frank opening and shutting so many doors. Every time we that see... he's exposing everyone to dangerous drafts. Oh, so they're going to have it at the Woodhouse. No, they're they're at the Weston's house, and they're like, this won't really do. They eventually decide that it should be held at the Crown Inn. Okay. They have to assure Mr. Woodhouse, Bill Nye, that um, this plan won't give them more colds. Oh, he's a hypochondriac. Yes. Yeah. Frank makes Emma promise to dance the first two dances with him. Of course. Emma is worried that Mr. Churchill, sorry, Mrs. Churchill, Frank's aunt, won't let Frank stay on for the ball, as it's kind of meant to happen just after he's supposed to return to London. He can stay. He's an adult. <sighs> to everyone's relief, he receives permission to stay. <laughs> Only Mr. Knightley is a Grinch about the ball. <laughs> he's not a dancer, not really into it. Emma figures that this means he's not into Jane that much. Otherwise, surely he'd be wanting to dance with her. Mr. Right? Knightley or Mr. Darcy? <laughs> Honestly, at this point. <laughs> Emma figures... Oh, well, I read that already. Unfortunately, in two days, Frank is urgently called back to his aunt, who is apparently taken ill again. Bro, she not ill. The ball is postponed indefinitely, and Frank oh. comes to visit Emma to say goodbye, clearly bummed. No. He seems nervous, too. Um, he says, perhaps, Miss Woodhouse, I think you can hardly be quite without suspicion. For a second, it's almost as if he's about to say something serious. <laughs> but he's interrupted by his father. By Widow Man? Yes. Mr. Weston. Fighter of the... <laughs> Fighter of the married man. <laughs> <laughs> he leaves and Emma is depressed. What was he going to say? Thing. With no one fun and handsome to pay attention to her anymore. That's true. Now it's boring again. Stupid Jane and <laughs> Small her piano. Village life. <laughs> Stupid Jane. It's all Jane's fault. <laughs> it is. Why doesn't she just whore around with her married man? <laughs> Love how into it you're getting on Emmy's behalf. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't going to be a lesson we need to learn later. Fuck Jane. <laughs> Fuck Jane. All right, let's end it here. <laughs> all right, so Frank. Yeah, yeah. Frank's so. off. Frank Frank song. <laughs> oh my god. Um, but he was going to say something, but he didn't because men are cowards. She takes her own disappointment as evidence that she must be a little bit in love with Frank after all. <laughs> While he's gone, she fantasizes how their relationship might play out. However, her fantasy always ends with her refusing Frank. <laughs> <laughs> so he'd be like, maybe he'll take me on like a cute boat on the river and he'll give me flowers and then he'll propose and then I'll say no. <laughs> And that's her fantasy. They're so relatable. <laughs> she wants the chase, but not the yeah. race. <laughs> I don't know. So it's all right. Don't worry about it. Yeah. So she believes she's a little in love with him, but not so much that her happiness depends she on him. She just likes the attention. And she th- yeah, exactly. And she thinks he loves her, but those feelings probably would be easily put to rest. When he writes to the Westons and Emma is allowed to read the letter, she's pleased by how sweet he is regarding Highbury. Um, how he briefly mentions Harriet in the letter... 
when he briefly mentions Harriet in the letter, she has an idea that he might fall for Harriet instead. But she stops herself quickly, intent not to do any more matchmaking. Yes, yeah, stop it. Because that didn't really work out very well last time. <laughs> anyway, Mr. Elton is back. Oh. Harriet is all a flutter, and Emma asks that she forget him, if not for her own sake, then for Emma's, who feels guilty every time he's brought up. <laughs> Can you just stop feeling bad so I don't feel bad? <laughs> Um, which actually works, and it makes Harriet feel sorry for Emma, which moves Emma. She's like, oh, she cares about me. She's just a better person than you. Yeah, Emma concludes that the tenderness of heart which Harriet possesses, and which Emma believes she herself lacks, is tremendously valuable. Well, so there she, you she's go. She's helping to realize that Harriet's some, a better person. Some lessons <laughs> happening. Emma decides that she and Harriet need to go visit the newlyweds, at his, as it is proper and important to reestablishing social relations, and they don't want to look like bitches. God, I'm so glad I don't live in these times. I don't give a <laughs> fuck if you've come back with your stupid wife. Jane. Mrs. Elton kind of sucks. <laughs> Jane. It's all Jane's fault. <laughs> Mrs. Elton kind of sucks. Yeah. But Emma reserves her judgment, thinking that maybe Mrs. Elton's just feeling awkward in this new town. When the couple returns the visit and comes to Hartfield, Emma decides that no, actually, Mrs. Elton does suck. <laughs> she's full of herself. She's overly familiar in her manners. Um... She's attached to superficial tokens of wealth, such as her sister and brother-in-law's Baruch Lando, which is a fancy word for carriage. Uh, Baruch Lando. She she presumes to take Emma under her social wing, and she prides, she's like, I have resources. What's that mean? I don't know, of self-worth and foresight that she doesn't. She condescends to Emma as if Emma isn't actually far above her station, which pisses Emma off, but not as much as it pisses Emma off when she refers to Mr. Knightley as simply Knightley implying a familiarity that she doesn't have and grossly disrespecting the man's highest status. She's just calling Paul Rudd Rudd. <laughs> Rudd. Rudd. Hey, Rudd C. <laughs> How dare she. She gives Emma advice, which Emma doesn't need, etc. It's just like, bitch, I don't need your help. <laughs> like, fuck off who? Fuck it, off. Who do you think about, Jane? <laughs> yeah. Uh, who, who put you up to this, Jane? <laughs> and Jane's just playing piano like fucking Beth or something. Just like sad and alone. She's like, I can teach you chords. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, Jane. No one wants your goddamn chords. Um, Mr. Jane? Woodhouse doesn't understand why Emma is so pissed when mm-hmm. he suggests that a bride, you know, my dear, is always the first in company. And that a bride should receive the utmost politeness and good manners. So I guess you get special extra attention when you're a newlywed. But anyway, Mrs. Elton comes to dislike Emma as well, having rejected her, having rejected her overtones of friendship. She's like, maybe you and I should start a choir club. And Emma's like, ha ha, no. Who said that to her? The new Elton. Mrs. Elton, yeah. Nah, bro. And she's like, I'm not your friend. <laughs> That ain't it. And then Mrs. Elton's like, well, fuck you, man. Oh my god, Mrs. Elton and Jane are gonna start, like, some doo-wop band or something. And Emma's gonna be like, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. Where's Frank? We sworn a lot more than I was expecting us to for this episode. Oh, uh, with me, there's always a little an F-bomb landmine. <laughs> Emma assumes Mr. Elton told her something rude. Told Mrs. Elton something rude about Emma. Re, like, the episode with Harriet as well more than that mrs elton takes on jane fairfax as her project uh, trying to bring her out socially kind of being condescending to jane as well i can't not comment if you're gonna bring up fucking jane <laughs> <laughs> emma is confused that jane has recently refused an invitation to join the campbells and dixons in ireland and also confused that she's um opened to mrs elton's attentions she's like girl you got no self-respect like come on when she brings up with miss knightley Paul Rudd, who's presumably just crammed it into her house again. <laughs> he defends Jane's acceptance of Miss. You didn't give that anything. That's really disappointing. You laughed. Where am I? I don't know. <laughs> There's too many people. Mr. Knightley, Paul Rudd, defends Jane's acceptance of Mrs. Elton's attentions. I guess on the grounds that her own station in life is pretty dire. Emma tries to probe his feelings for Jane again, saying, The extent of your admiration may take you by surprise one day or other. Knightley seems flustered and uneasy and embarrassed and wonders whether Emma has been playing matchmaker for him. She's like, No way, I'm not. And then Not for fucking Jane, that whore. Then he's <laughs> like, Well, no way, I'm not in love with her, that is. He says, For one thing, Jane is too reserved. He'd personally prefer a gal who's a bit easier around people and open hearted. <laughs> Emma is pleased as punch that Mrs. Weston's theory is wrong. Can you please put your tongue back in your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> On behalf of her nephew, obviously. Interesting. So he's not into... J- Who gave her the fucking piano? Mrs. Weston, on the other hand, wonders if his eagerness in denying the charge indicates otherwise. She's like, maybe he's 
two against the idea. Is this the governess? Yeah. Okay. Emma is socially obligated to plan a dinner party for Mrs. Elton. Being Why? the new bride in town. I don't know. Why is she? politeness rules. I don't know. Someone else could do it. Harriet asks to be excused from attending. Fair enough. Which gives Emma a chance to ease her conscience about mistreating and ignoring Jane Fairfax, who she invites to fill Harriet's empty seat. John Knightley, big bro Knightley, is also included in the invite because he'll be in Highbury um, with his two eldest sons. No, Isabella. No. Because he's just bringing the two sons to visit their aunt and grandpa. They're going to stay there for a while. Yeah, it's fine. <clears throat> At the party, John Knightley tells off Jane Fairfax for walking to the post office in the rain to pick up letters. She's like, dude, it's not a big deal. It only rained for a little bit before I got home. But suddenly the whole dinner party is up in Jane's business, telling her not to walk around in the rain so she won't be ill. And Mrs. Elton insists on sending a servant. She's like, we'll get our man who gets the letters. She can't remember his name to get Jane's letters as well as theirs. So she doesn't have to walk to the post office and she's like I like walking to the post office but no one ever listens to Jane yeah cause fuck Jane <laughs> anyway right? anyway the conversation moves to handwriting because the Georgian period was just so boring <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. and Mr. Knightley praises Emma's penmanship but disagrees when she praises Frank's <laughs> the women gather in the drawing room after dinner while the men play cards and smoke cigars and suck each other off or whatever men did back then. I'm obviously done with this book of what That point. sounds better than what the women were doing. Let's, <laughs> let's do that. <laughs> let's see what the men are doing. <laughs> Mrs. Elton insists on helping Jane find a governess position, though Jane says she needs to wait until after she sees the Campbells in the summer. The men come in. After sucking each other off. Yeah, Just like satisfied wiping and mouth. sweaty. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> and Mr. Weston appears, having just got back from business in London. He brings a letter from Frank, reporting <gasps> Mrs. Churchill is going to be letting Frank come back to Highbury for a significant amount of time. Yeah. Mr. and Mrs. Weston are stoked, and Emma's a bit nervous, and Mr. Knightley is uninterested. <laughs> okay, Paul Rudd. <laughs> Mr. Weston and Mrs. Elton have an interminable conversation in which Mrs. Elton fishes for compliments and goes on about Maple Grove, the estate where her wealthy brother and sister-in-law live. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Weston talks about Frank and the ill little Frank's art. And then Mrs. Weston's sister-in-law. Mrs. Or, is any of this important? Because this is so boring. <laughs> Before the conversation becomes too fun, they are interrupted by tea. John Knightley gives Emma final instructions regarding taking care of his sons and wonders aloud if they will be in the way at Hartfield. Now Emma's, be- is her social life's just going off. She's like, my social life's not going off. I'm a homebody more than Mr. Knightley. And he's like, ah, ha, 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 ha. I'm kind of just regretting putting this part in because it doesn't matter. Well, then just don't read it. I'm sorry. It's too late. It's the day of the ball. Emma is invited by Mr. Weston to come early. Wait, who's fucking ball? They're all that they all plan together. Officially, I think Mr. Weston's running it though. Yeah, you didn't you didn't bring that the fuck up. Well, remember they were planning it in Randall's. Her and like Frank. The, yeah, the room's too small. We'll put it in the Crown Inn. It's that ball. Okay. Emma is invited by Mr. Weston to come early and give her opinion on the arrangements. She thinks this will give her some privacy for her second meeting with Frank. However, she didn't count on being only one of several people who's been invited early. That sucks. To give opinions, she remarks that half the guests seem to be here early to give opinions. Frank seems excited, but restless, and he's constantly moving to see who's arrived. He's kind of like staring at the door. When Uh-oh. Jane and Mrs. Bates arrives, or Miss Bates, he helps him with the umbrellas and sets, settles down. Mrs. Alana, Elton, can you be? Can you have a more neutral? <laughs> Mrs. Elton pronounces Frank a very fine young man. Mm. Presumably, Knightley is somewhere nearby, violently twisting a napkin around <laughs> his head. <laughs> that was that's not in the book. That was just speculation. Mrs. Bates overwhelms everyone with professions of gratitude and pleasure. Frank tells Emma he dislikes Mrs. Elton and her familiar manner with Jane. So he and Emma bond over the dislike for her a bit. Nice. Then he runs off to ask his dad when the dancing will begin. Mr. and Mrs. Weston realize Mrs. Elton expects to be asked to lead the dance, an honor that was originally going to be Emma's. But because she's the newly married woman in town, and by rights she should. Emma's pissed, but she steps down and enjoys dancing with Frank. The only thing that mars the fun of the ball, it's a very fun ball, top notch, (laughs) 10 out of 10, is Emma sees Harriet sitting down by herself. 
Mrs. Weston also sees and asks Mr. Elton, one of the only men of appropriate age not dancing, if he might stand up with her. Where the fuck is um he's, John Arbuckle? He's he's not invited to this. Oh football. yeah, he's, he's too, too poor. Yeah. He straight up rejects the idea in earshot of Harriet saying, like, I'm married now and my dancing days are behind me. <laughs> Another person sees Where this. Where the fuck is Paul Rudd? Why doesn't he ask her? Another person Paul sees Rudd. this from across the room. Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd, Mr. Knightley. He goes over to Harriet and dances with her. Good. You remember this from Clues? Yeah, I do, actually. <laughs> When she's like putting on the shirt yeah. all different ways and Paul Rudd dances with her in the, at the party yeah. and Paul Rudd looks really stupid and I yeah. love him so much. <laughs> Emma is filled with affection for them both. Later on, standing by the punch bowl or something, she thanks him. Darcy? <laughs> He's there. <laughs> He's just like... <laughs> and then he like pushes yeah. it off the table. <laughs> he also doesn't like Frank. <laughs> They're both twisting their nuts. Him and Knightley would get along so they well. They would, they would. So while they're there, Emma thanks him for the gesture. He asks why the Eltons seem to hate the pair of them so much. And so she kind of explains their earlier shenanigans. Hmm. She acknowledges that... She's like, it's a funny story. She acknowledges that Knightley was right about Elton's character leaving something to be desired. Mm. Knightley, in turn, admits that Harriet is a much lovelier, more respectable girl than he initially gave her credit Oh, fuck. Is he going to get into that? And asks Emma who she's going to dance with now. Bro. With you, she says. If you'll ask me. Yo, that's some flirty ass shit. <laughs> he does, and they dance. There and this is where the line comes up that they like steal for Clueless, which is like, we're not so much brother and sister that it would be inappropriate for us to get up and dance together. Yeah. And then Clueless, he's like, yeah, we're not brothers. <laughs> Doesn't he have like a weird moment where he like, realizes? Have you seen Clueless? Yeah, isn't okay. that in it? I swear to God it is. Yeah, it is. You're just, you're just full of shit. Okay. <laughs> anyway, Emma reflects on her talk with Mr. Knightley at the ball with Joy and is very pleased that Elton's rudeness has cured Harriet of continuing to have a crush on him. Thank God. Suddenly, Frank appears with Harriet Bro. at her house, Uh-oh. who's fainting in his arms. What? She was just set upon by robbers. Austin refers to them as gypsies, but I'm going to call them robbers. Yeah. Um... Um, and he rescued her from them. Emma can't help but wonder whether this exciting episode will enamor them to each other. <laughs> Remember, she was like, Harriet can be the new me for Frank. Yes. So this was written in 1815, 1816. Yeah. So this was set around that mm-hmm. time. I was going to say, like, gypsies, like in Peaky Blinders, but that's literally a hundred years later. But honestly, yeah, like, that's the culture. Oh. Yeah, because remember it was such a big deal that he's, like, half gypsy. Yeah, caravan, you know. Um, some of them are Irish, some of them are Romani. I he think. was Romani. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah, they were all over Europe doing all sorts of stuff. Love it. Harriet comes to Emma to tell her that now she doesn't like Mr. Elton anymore. She's going to burn the stuff that she kept as remembrances of him. She kept stuff like in Clueless when Ty kept all that stuff. Like the kitchen towel and the song that played. And it was like... So she's got a bit of bandage she kept. Um, Ew. Well, I don't know. It was unused. It was like the off cut. Um, of something Mr. Elton used, and a useless pencil stub he discarded. So yeah, she throws them on the fire. It's weird. Emma wonders if she's crushing on Frank now. Yes. In a later conversation, Harriet says she will never marry. Which Wait, means... Frank or Paul Rudd? Frank. Emma thinks she's crushing on Frank because he rescued her from robbers. Oh, sorry. I was think- still yeah. thinking about her and Paul Rudd dancing. That's okay. Um, Harriet says she will never marry, which makes Emma think that maybe she has a new crush that is of a higher social class than her. Interesting. Um, she asks her if this is the case. Harriet says yes. And Emma says she isn't surprised considering the great service he rendered Harriet. Harriet agrees, confirming Emma's suspicions. No, she's an idiot. She means Paul Rudd. <laughs> Emma's like, let's not talk about it anymore. <laughs> and advises Harriet to be cautious, but not to give up hope as greatest disparities have been overcome in the past. <laughs> yeah. Now, Mr. Knightley, Paul Rudd, All right, look. begins to suspect there is some sort of secret understanding between Frank and Jane. Oh, fucking Jane, what? <laughs> Emma, Harriet, Mr. and Mrs. Weston, Frank, Jane, and Miss Bates. Knightley witnesses a strange exchange. Basically what happens is Frank asks a question that reveals he has some secret knowledge that only Jane knew. Yeah, because Jane was saying, I don't want to talk about her. Yeah, well, it's like she she heard that like the Perrys were going to get a carriage or whatever. Like, that no one else knew it hadn't been publicized. But Frank was like, didn't you tell me to the aunt? And the aunt's like, what? No, I never told you. I told Jane. And Jane's like, fuck. Stop. <laughs> so, 
Yes. So that's Mr. Knightley's like, what's going on here? Um, they get to Hartfield and Emma invites everyone in for tea. They play a word game with alphabet tiles that the two Knightley children play with. Scrabble. Yeah. Mr. Knightley watches Frank construct the word blunder, which he shows to Jane. Then he constructs the word Dixon and shows it to Emma, who laughs. And then he shows it to Jane and she pushes the puzzle away in anger. What? What's with the word Dixon? That was the name of the person Emma was speculating that Jane had a... Uh, and Fra- Frank's doing this. Frank did that. Like, to tease Jane. I'm so, there's just... I'm sorry, there's so many I fucking know, people. I know. <laughs> Nightly, Paul Rudd, is worried about Emma being disappointed in her crush on Frank. And stays behind after to warn her. He asks about the Dixon joke, but she refuses to explain, embarrassed. He tells her his suspicion that Jane and Frank might have a thing, and she laughs at him, saying she knows Frank is indifferent to Jane. Paul Rudd is silenced and irritated by Emma's implication that she's in Frank's confidence. (laughs) He's jealous. They all plan an outing to Box Hill. A lookout, I think. Box Hill? Like in Victoria? Pussy town. (laughs) Oh. Oh. <laughs> very different <laughs> sorry I thought you were making a joke okay. but it has to be postponed because a horse hurts his ankle or something oh I thought it was going to be because of COVID restrictions <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Knightley half jokes that they should come to his estate instead which prompts Mrs. Elton to immediately invite herself over and Knightley has to expressly prohibit her from planning all the details and sending out her own invitation. He says only one woman, there's like only one woman who I would allow to invite people to Domwell Abbey. And she's like, Mrs. Weston? And he's like, no, Mrs. Knightley. <laughs> like, the only Knightley woman <laughs> is the only person who can invite people to the Knightley house. Is, is this Frank saying this? Who's saying this? this no, is, this Paul is Paul Rudd, Rudd saying Who's this. Who's Mrs. Knightley? Mrs. Knightley, Isabella, Emma's big sister. Isabel- Meanwhile, the horse heals, so they decide they'll go to Box Hill the day after they go to Paul Rudd's. At Donwell, Paul Rudd's house, Emma enjoys walking around the house and grounds. It's very peaceful for her and nice. He's got a nice house. She overhears Jane trying to resist an offer um, of a governess placement that Mrs. Elton has found for her. Hmm. Emma comes across Harriet and Mr. Knightley looking out at the Martin family farm, um, which is on the Knightley property, as you'll recall. She thinks the two are a weird grouping, but thinks little of it. Mrs. Weston is worried that Frank hasn't arrived yet. At the house, Emma encounters Jane Fairfax in the hallways, who asks her to tell everyone else that she's walked home. After she's been gone a little while, Frank turns up late and is cranky. He says he's just hot, too hot, and he mentions he wants to get out of England and go abroad. Emma teases him till he cheers up, and he promises to come to Box Hill the next day. What is Box Hill? Box Hill is like a lookout, like a hill. So it's just like a fun destination. Fun little walk. It's so boring in Georgian times. I can't stress this enough. They have nothing to do. Why are there books about it then? I don't know. know. Cancelled. The whole Georgian (laughs) era. Cancelled. Mr. and Mrs. Elton keep to themselves on the trip to Box Hill. Paul Rudd, Mr. Knightley, Miss Bates, so the annoying spinster, and Jane Fairfax form a third clique, form another clique, and Emma, Harriet, and Frank form the third clique. A what? So they're just like hanging out in little a, groups. A clique? Like clique. What's a clique? Clique. It's French. Clique. C L I Q U E. Yeah. Is that not hate? Fuck. Can I just. <laughs> can a bitch live like. <laughs> they're in three <laughs> little groups. Emma is disappointed by how dull Frank and Harriet are that day. However, later, Frank livens up a bit and is excessively gallant. She thinks nothing of his flirtations, taking them only as a means to amuse himself and her. But she realizes that the others can definitely pick up on it too. Mm, Everyone's hot and listless. Um, It's summer. They're outside. Frank tries to liven up the party by saying that Emma demands to know what they're all thinking. What? (laughs) Mrs. Elton, he's like, Emma wants to know. What are you all thinking? She's like, no, I'm not. Stop it. Ha. <laughs> and he's like, ha. Nah. And everyone's like, fuck off. Mrs. Elton is offended. Yeah. Sure. By Frank's deference to Emma. And Mr. Knightley, Paul Rudd, asks dryly if she would really like to know what he's thinking. Yes. <laughs> Presumably, like, knock off the floating, you abominable tart or something like that. Well, what is it? What are you thinking? 
He doesn't say. She doesn't laugh. Mm. Frank take, uh, changes tack, now demanding a piece of wit from every member of the party. Demanding one thing very clever, or two things moderately clever, or three things very dull indeed. Oh, ooh, okay. What about four nothing? <laughs> Miss Bates good-naturedly comment, the old spinster comments mm. that she will have no trouble thinking of three very dull things. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and Emma responds, "Ah, oh, ma'am, but there may be a difficulty. Pardon me, but she will be limited as to number only three at once." Oh, burn. What does that mean? She's like, "Oh, you're limited to three things, though." Oh, you can only do three and three you, dull things, you and know. you're always dull. Yeah, basically like, is what she's saying yeah see i always need like yeah. a translation yeah because i'm just like um, what mrs bates is clearly hurt oh she's like oh <laughs> you know like, you're like i can say it but you can <laughs> are you trying to tell me something right now no huh. <laughs> <laughs> mr weston provides a cute one everyone's like oh. awkward and they like try and move on with the game mr weston provides a cute one what oh. two letters of the alphabet indicate perfection m and a Emma. And she's like, oh. Oh. How cute is that? The Eltons leave in disgust for a walk. (laughs) (laughs) Frank says something sarcastic about the Eltons being lucky they're compatible, as it's hard to tell with such a short engagement or something like that. Oh, Emma. (laughs) Knightley leaves for a walk with Jane and Fairfax and Mrs. Miss Bates. Emma, left alone with Frank, gets sick of him. (laughs) Oh, what? Be so fun. Later, Mr. Knightley takes Emma aside and in no uncertain terms tells her she's acted like an absolute bitch to Miss Bates and tells her to consider how the lady feels. She's had an unfortunate life. She's never been anything but good to Emma and everyone else in the party looks towards Emma for the proper way to act. Why? She argues with him weakly, but she knows he's right. And then she cries all the way home. Oh, yeah. She's ashamed. Emma tries to make things up by, it's like punching down, you know? Like, don't do that. It's like, make that joke to Frank. Like, someone yeah, who can take it. Don't do it in front of everyone, you know? Yeah. And also, like, yeah. Because we can make that joke as equal friends. Exactly, us, But yeah. she is, like, below Senior, Emma. Yeah. yeah. So it's, yeah. It's, it, it, it hurts. Yeah. <laughs> Emma tries to make things up the next day by visiting the Bates, Bateses first thing following morning. Miss Bates' humility and kindness during her visit are a further... Um, sort of reproach to Emma's bad behavior. So she's like, feels even more guilty because she's being so nice to her. I'm just like, oh, yeah, I don't deserve it. <laughs> um, Jane, on the other hand, is in her bedroom with a headache. Ugh. Apparently she just accepted the governess position Mrs. Elton found for her, although she said she wouldn't accept it until she'd seen the Campbells again. Emma's surprised, genuinely, con- genuinely concerned for all the unhappiness Jane going away will cause. She's leaving in a fortnight. Emma is surprised that Frank left for Richmond the previous evening. And she's struck by the difference between Mrs. Churchill's power and Jane's. You know, Churchill can make anyone do anything and Jane kind of just has to go where she's told. Just Poor Jane Fairfax. Ugh, don't even try. <laughs> You're like, no, <"Nah>, fuck her. <laughs> um, she's ashamed of her earlier gossip about Jane and Mr. Dixon. And well, feels she should like be. <laughs> she, yeah, and she feels like she wants to make it up to Jane. When Emma gets back to Hartfield, she realizes both Mr. Knightley, poor Rudd, and Harriet arrived while she was out. Knightley, poor Rudd, is about to depart for London to see John and Isabella. They're fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, his hastiness surprised Emma. It's like he's trying to avoid talking to her before he leaves. But mid- Mr. Woodhouse, Bill Nye, her dad, lets it slip that Emma has just gone to visit the Bateses. Oh. And Emma blushes and exchanges a glance with Knightley, who immediately softens towards her. Oh. Realizing that she's gone to make amends for her. Unless she went there to insult her even more. <laughs> you know, like, fuck you. Fuck you. She just pees on the stoop. <laughs> uh, um, he makes an unusual gesture for him. What is it? Does he kiss her on the forehead? He takes her hand and oh. raises it, almost kissing it. <gasps> Before looking like he's decided the better of it and like releasing her hands. Stop! <laughs> oh no, the sexual <laughs> She's gratified by the gesture, though a bit confused as to why he aborted it halfway through. The next day, the surprising news that Mrs. Churchill has died. What? Reaches the village. Frank's sick. Huh? Oh, she was sick. Though. I know. <laughs> and everyone else has to eat their words about her faking her sickness. Okay, but more first of all, I never would have 
I never would have assumed she was faking it until you told me. Well, that and they all thought she was faking it. So everyone's like pulling their collars like, like ooh. Um, but more importantly, Emma thinks this might improve Harriet's chances with Frank. <laughs> Meanwhile, she attempts to connect with and help out Jane, but gets rejected every time. Because Jane's like sick, right? At the moment, something terrible has happened to her. What? She's accepted this offer. Oh, yeah. That oh, she yeah. wasn't going to. And now she's like, you know, distraught. And she's locked herself up in her house. So Emma sends her food, stuffs, offers to go on walks with her for exercise, etc. And Emma's a little hurt that it seems like Jane's avoiding her. However, Mr. Weston arrives to escort Emma to see Mrs. Weston. Something is afoot. Ooh, he, assures the game. Her... <laughs> <laughs> he assures her that she hasn't died or anything, but they do have some troubling news. She's pregnant. She is, but that's not the troubling news. Jane's pregnant. No, 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 no. Mrs. Weston's pregnant. Oh, that's she's fine. Married. She's it's married. Fine. It's fine. Um, troubling news. When she gets to their house, Mrs. Weston reveals that Frank has been secretly engaged to Jane Fairfax this whole time. Sam's leaving. She's leaving. <laughs> She's gone. I don't know. What? <laughs> no! <laughs> Whoa. No! You didn't see that coming? No. <laughs> Wait. No. No, Frank. No. Because he was like making fun of her. Yeah. Because it was it was a ploy to keep it a secret. How? So the whole, the, 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 the whole time. <laughs> the whole time. You're so pissed. I'm Sally Field in um, <laughs> Mrs. Doubtfire. The whole time. <laughs> Because Frank was like, oh, yeah, fuck that bitch. <laughs> but he was saying fucking shit yeah, about her. he was her. faking it. To keep it a secret. My heart is racing. <laughs> like, feel my... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I can't feel it. That's okay. <laughs> Touch my breast for nothing. <laughs> uh, no. Yes. I did not see that girl. <laughs> All right. Bro. Bro. This ain't it. <laughs> Emma is shocked. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> How come? <laughs> um, and all of the bitchy things she said about Jane to Frank flashed before her eyes. Yes! That's what I was saying! <laughs> but she assures them that she wasn't in love with him as they thought she was and were worried she was. And she isn't hurt by this. She is worried about Harriet's feelings. She's like, fuck, not again. <laughs> She's just got to stop trying to help Harriet. <laughs> yep. She is a bit pissed about the way he acted towards Jane and herself while yeah. he was down. But he's apparently going to be sending a long letter soon explaining himself. Fuck off. <laughs> apparently, Mr. Churchill has chilled out since his wife's death and has given his consent to the match. So it's happening in that Nah, night. bro. Just, nah. So now, to Harriet. She now thinks that she should have discouraged Harriet's crush on Frank rather than giving her hope. She also realizes that Jane has been avoiding her this whole time because she's seen Emma as a rival for Frank's affections. Harriet, on the other hand, has already heard the story from Mr. Weston and isn't bothered by it at all. Ooh. Turns out... She said to John Arbuckle, I know. The man who did her a service and who she now has a crush on isn't Frank Churchill at Paul all. Rudd, bro. It's Mr. Knightley. <laughs> then Emma has a realization. And this is the quote from the book. Maybe I like my stepbrother. <laughs> it darted through her with the speed of an arrow that Mr. Knightley must marry no one but herself. <laughs> the arrow on the cover! <laughs> Bro- Frank. <laughs> she plays it cool while talking to Harriet, though, who tells Emma that she has reason to believe Knightley may have feelings for herself, Harriet. Such as him saving her at the ball, paying her special attention at his house party. And, and the, the kiss thing. Mm -hmm. No, that was for Emma. So this is Harriet saying, I, oh, think, yes, I think Knightley might like me back. This is, yeah. Because he is, danced with me at the party. This, he doesn't really like dancing. This is from Clueless now. Yeah. Um, and Emma's memory corroborates these instances. She's like, fuck, maybe he does like her. <laughs> when Harriet leaves, Emma realizes she was wrong about everything. And if Knightley were to marry Harriet, it would be all her doing. She does some self-reflection. She realizes that it has always been important to her to be the most important woman in Mr. Knightley's life. 
and she's reveled, reveled, reveled in his special concern for her. However, she cannot believe he could return her feelings, especially when he's just been so angry at her and critical of her recent behavior. Moreover, even if he asked her to marry him, she couldn't bring herself to leave her father all alone. Mrs. Weston arrives to report that she's just visited Jane, and it actually went really well, and everyone is relieved, and there's no bad blood, and we're all just excited about the wedding, which is good. Jane admitted to Mrs. Weston all she suffered during her secret engagement. She blames herself for misjudgment and acknowledges Emma's attempts at kindness during her sickness. Emma is still just mortified at her behavior over the last her entire life and sadly thinks about how sad it will be if Knightley gets married and stops visiting her house every day. Poor Poor why does he visit her house every day, though, right? Emma goes for a walk in the garden to ruminate about how sad she is. That's when Cher was going for a walk, and then she's like, ooh, didn't I have that on my side? <laughs> <laughs> to her surprise, she's found there by Paul Rudd himself. Thank God. Mr. Knightley. He has just returned from London and come straight there, having heard about Frank and Jane and worried that Emma will be upset. Oh. She assures him that she never had feelings for Frank, which surprises him. She expresses regret about her behavior and he listens in a strange silence. Finally, he admits he may have underrated Frank and admits to envying him in one respect. Because the ammo beat a chicken and he got a lot of the way you made. Super worried that Knightley is about to admit his feelings to Harriet, Emma begs him not to talk about it. <laughs> which shuts him right up. Fuck! And he seems mortified. Guys. When she sees this, she immediately feels like a shit friend and backtracks, saying, no, of course, tell me what's on your mind. <laughs> and that she'll be glad to hear him as a friend. Uh. He says, and I'm paraphrasing, he doesn't want to be her friend. He wants to be her husband. She is shocked, but also suddenly in a state of perfect happiness. By the time they get back to the house, they're engaged. Knightley surprised it well. He was convinced she was in love with Frank. He left to London to try to get over her, but when he heard Frank was marrying Jane, he, he was like, like eh, eh, eh. Well, he felt like he needed to come back and comfort Emma. <laughs> he thought she'd be brokenhearted. <laughs> no. <laughs> Emma is all a flutter, but she keeps it on the DL as they have tea with her father <laughs> and then depart each other for the night. She decides to write Harriet a letter explaining what has happened so they don't have to talk about it in person. Bro, which would no. be, let's be honest, just excruciating for everyone involved. She has ruined Harriet's t- life <laughs> so many times. She will also arrange for Harriet to visit Isabella in London just to give them time to adjust and avoid each other. Harriet needs to see a dentist in London anyway. Oh. If she said that, Emma didn't just decide that. Emma was like, maybe you should also see the dentist. <laughs> Say Emma 20 for 20% off. <laughs> <laughs> that night, she thinks over what she's going to do. And then settles on a long engagement until her father dies. <laughs> she said we can't leave him by himself. That's I think Paul Rudd would understand though. <laughs> I right? <laughs> Mr. Weston forwards Emma the letter from Frank explaining all his actions. Finally, what the fuck does he have to say for himself? <laughs> in it he apologizes, especially to her, explaining that it was simply he was simply in deep cover. <laughs> And his relationship with Jane couldn't be discovered, hence his unpardonable, unpardonable behavior. And that he wouldn't have flirted with Emma so much if he hadn't been sure she didn't have any feelings for him anyway. He loves Jane and is deeply ashamed she suffered in any small part because of his actions. When Jane left Donwell Abbey that morning, they met on her way out in his way in and they quarreled about his behavior towards Emma. She thought it a hurtful and inappropriate way to maintain their secret. He was upset about her caution, which he interpreted as coldness. Then there was some shenanigans with misconnections, where she said they should break off the engagement, and his letter didn't, like, didn't reach her. So she took the governess job, which she heard about, and then he rushed to her side to stop her. Now everything's okay again, and they're reconciled. Very good. Cool. Fuck these two. They <laughs> both suck. <laughs> Fuck them. All right, Emma get rid of them. Emma forgives Frank immediately. And shows Knightley the letter too, who, though saying Frank deserves more consequences for his behavior than he's had, nevertheless wishes him and Jane happiness. They discuss Emma's situation with her father. They're like, enough about other people. Let's talk about us. (laughs) (laughs) Um, He agrees that they can't make Emma's father move to Donwell Abbey with them. Mm -hmm. Mr. Knightley proposes just to move in with them at Hartfield instead, at least until her father dies. 
a much better solution. She realizes it'd be hard for him to give up the freedom of living at Dormal Abbey and is moved by his sacrifice. Mm. Anyway, Harriet agrees to go to London. Emma decides not to tell her dad about the engagement until Mrs. Weston, who's now pregnant, has had her baby. She visits Jane. They are unable to speak openly because Mrs. Elton is there, and Jane's engagement is still like officially a secret, although Emma thinks from her not-so-subtle remarks that Mrs. Elton may be in on the secret. Ugh. She's like, we have a secret! Or some <laughs> shit. She's got like a teacup, like a secret! <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Elton turns up annoyed that Mr. Knightley, Paul Rudd, has flaked on a meeting with him. And Emma realizes he must be at Hartfield waiting for her. <laughs> and so she leaves. When Jane walks her to the door, each feeling she owes the other apology, um, both full of goodwill for the other. Mrs. Weston delivers a healthy baby girl. Yay. Mr. Knightley, poor Rudd, reminisces about how headstrong Emma was when she was a child. And he was a young person. <laughs> I don't know how old he is. I'm um, gonna guess like probably like five or six years older than her, maybe. Oh, I reckon more. Eight years older than her, that, like kind of like Bridget Jones. So maybe yeah, yeah like I don't know. I'm gonna say eight years older. Older than we would like probably approve today. She expresses so Emma expresses gratitude that he was always there for her, yeah. and he says she would have done just as well without him. Um. <laughs> we, you know, we agree to disagree. Emma is a bit bummed she can't speak to him more openly about the Harriet situation. But Mr. Knightley, uh, Mr. John Knightley, sorry, his big bro. Yeah. Or smaller bro. Really big sure. bro, Knight- bro Knightley. Bro Knightley. Comes around and congratulates the pair, surprising them both by saying he's not surprised. I reckon <laughs> older, because together. Isabella's older. Mm. When em- Yeah, but that's like, why would his children not inherit Donwell then? Unless there's more than one. The family has more than one property between them or something. I don't know. I don't know how it works. Fuck the rich. <laughs> when <laughs> when so Emma close. finally works up the courage to tell her father the news, he is shocked. But he gradually resigns himself to losing his last daughter. Mrs. Weston helps persuade him that his happiness will be increased rather than diminished by the marriage. On her own part, she's stoked. Um, someone to look after Emma and stop her from ruining Everything. They get married. Where would they live? His house? Because she gets that he house. Says he says he'll dies. move into her house. I know, I know, but... Oh, after the dad dies? Yeah. I think his. But what is going to happen to her house? Ooh, rent it out. Oh, yeah. Fuck the rich. I don't know. Fuck the rich. I Whatever they want, I guess. Um, soon enough, Emma and Mr. Knightley are the talk of Highbury. <laughs> Only the Eltons aren't pleased. <laughs> ah, fuck them. Knightley soon has news for Emma. Harriet is going to marry Robert Martin after all. Yay! Knightley had sent Robert to London with a package for his brother. And a package for Harriet, am I right? <laughs> well, Harriet was there, and they begin to spend time together again. Knightley worries. <laughs> At least Alana liked my joke. <laughs> yeah. Knightley worries that the news will upset Emma, but she's obviously thrilled. Yeah, if she and a had, little amused If she Harriet's... hadn't fucked around the first yeah. place, they'd be married by like, now. <laughs> Um, she's amused at Harriet's rapid recovery from being heartbroken. She wasn't heartbroken. She always liked John Arbuckle. The two... <laughs> <laughs> In the cartoon room. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> the two go to visit the Westons and find Frank and Jane there. At oh, first, her meeting with Frank is awkward, but soon the four of them are easy and joking with each other. Although Emma is further convinced by the meeting of Knightley's superiority to Frank. Good. When Harriet gets back from London, Emma is delighted to see her so happy. Her parentage has at last been revealed. Her father was actually a tradesman, making her a perfect match class-wise for Martin. <laughs> God. Thank God! Emma receives Mr. Martin at Hartfield, but realises that her intimate friendship with Harriet must change into a calmer sort of goodwill now that their social positions are so different. What? So I guess we didn't learn anything. Harriet and Mr. Martin are the first of the newly engaged couples to marry. Then um, Emma and Knightley, and then Jane and Frank. Emma would like to be married in October, but it seems Mr. Woodhouse would never agree because the weather... It's too cold. ...and health reasons. (laughs) But when Mrs. Weston's poultry house is robbed, Mr. Woodhouse is eager to have Mr. Knightley in the household for protection. (laughs) So they are married, and the wishes, the hopes, the confidence, the predictions of the small band of true friends who witnessed the ceremony were fully answered in the perfect happiness of the union. And that is the end of the story. So we learned that rich people still fucking suck. 
No matter how cute or quirky you make them. And they still suck and fuck. <sighs> I hate myself. <laughs> End it at that point. <laughs> You can. You don't have to wait for me. You don't have to wait for us to watch it. Yeah, because we'll never see each other ever again. No, I know. This is so sad.